shame is referred to as this quite a lot in the book. It's as though shame, um, when people feel ashamed of themselves, they've recovered their sort of core morality. As though when, they've, when they can feel shame, they can remember their best version of themselves. Mm. And it's very strange in the book because it, it makes it very clear, I don't know whether this is intentional on Baldwin's part, that shame is also very conservative. That in a way it guarantees that there's no news. Because when you're ashamed, and I write about this in the book, but when you're ashamed, mm. you, it's as though you know what your real morality is. Mm. As though there's something in you will remind you, will recenter you. You can't wriggle out of exactly. it. Exactly, you can't wriggle out of it. And yet, you know, if we give this two minutes thought, we'll know that ten years ago or ten minutes ago, people were very ashamed when they felt themselves to be gay. Mm. And they don't feel that now. Mm. So that's an example of capitulating to shame as a, so a social regulation. Mm. So shame could be the most difficult thing to think about, mm. not a guaranteed indicator of an, of an essential morality. Mm. You write about how it sort of fixes you to the spot. Yeah. Shame. It's kind of mortifying. It's you know you, it's, you can't it's, think. It's like you want beam me up, Scotty, get me out of here. Yeah. Hole in the floor, please. Yeah. Someone's got you. They've got you fixed in some kind of position where you just can't wriggle. Yeah. And escape and it. And 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 it makes you wonder there which is the most monstrous, the shamed person or the shamer. Because clearly the shamer mm. is a torturer here. Mm. The shamer is really murderous. And you can see how the abjection of shame is obviously, in a sense, a, a refuge from the terror. But I think that the point in the book is that, I mean, it's what you've described, which is that the thing about shame is it feels as though it's impossible to think about or there's nothing really to talk about. We'll just all acknowledge you did a terrible mm. thing. There it is. Mm. Well, this is actually very strange, certainly very strange in a psychoanalytic context, because you know, it's the, the psychoanalysis that I would value would be one in which people were willing to explore these, uh, in, you know, uh, explore these things. So that anywhere you found yourself, you found yourself with the need to stop going on thinking or speaking, mm. that's going to be where the action is, or one of the places where the action is. Mm. Shame seems to be like a moment of exposure where the, the, the lights are on you and you've yeah. fully been kind of um, unavoidably um, tied to your behaviour and your ideal. Yeah. Yes, and what it and exposes... that gap. But then, yeah, but then what it exposes is how much work you've been doing to adhere to a particular picture of yourself. So when it's compromised or mm. violated or betrayed, you are mortified. Mm. And in a way you could think, well, it doesn't feel like this, but the interesting thing about shame experiences is they expose the tyranny of one's internal ideals. Mm. They might also reveal what matters to you most. I mean, it's one thing, or it's not one thing or the mm. other, but it is several mm. things. And it, it makes it clear that one's been sort of addicted to unconscious models of a preferred self. And you may want to think about that. Mm. Is that sort of the same as the kind of false self that we, we're kind of having unrealistic ideas about how we should be in a sense and we just can't match up? We're doomed to a kind of... A bit like the hysterics dooms this perpetual cycle of sort of failing to get the attention or failing to get the person to really notice what, what, what they need. Mm. Is, is it, you know, is, it's like a kind of sort of perpetual failure, isn't it? It's well, quite, there, there is, but... Quite what, sadomasochistic. Well, it's very, it is sadomasochistic, but, but mm. what's interesting about this is that it's not unlike Marxism, which is Freudianism is extremely deterministic. And yet Freud practices psychoanalysis because he believes somewhere that it's possible to intervene, to modify. Mm. That there's a repetition compulsion, but also it can be modified. Mm. And that seems to me what we're doing. Mm. And people come, obviously, because they're stuck in something that has become too painful. And that's what's being thought about, explored, elaborated, expanded is. And um, what's the repressed repertoire here? Mm. Why have you needed to narrow your mind in this way? Not that you can be anything or anybody, but there's a very specific project here mm. of narrowing who you can imagine yourself to be mm. or who you can live yourself out as. Mm. 
Because aren't, aren't we sort of completely scared of going mad so much that we organise ourselves quite tightly? <laughs> I think, you know, I think it depends. We get obsessions. I, I know what you mean. Things but I, that I think it, de us it down. depends, though, on your earliest experiences. I think mm. because some people are frightened of being mad, and if they are, that's for very good reasons. Mm. But there's a, a broader thing I think, which Bolas writes about, which is people being fearful of the complexity of their own minds, mm. that we are in excess of ourselves, and the question is what could, what we can make of that excess, mm. um, and. The advantage of a good psychoanalysis is it enables you to extend the repertoire of what you can let yourself feel, mm. think, say, know, etc. And it can give you a clue about why you've needed to preempt or preclude certain experiences. Mm. The risks you can't take and the risks you want to take. Mm. Well, I was reading the other day about um, the government sort of data assistants who can scrape data off our off the right people's Google accounts and then manipulate them and sort of stuff like that. Do you, do you think shame is, can we scrape it off our, our hard drive, you know, get rid of it? Or, or, or it seems something quite, quite irreducible about it. Well, I think either that's true or that's what we're supposed to believe. You see what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's, it, it's going to be very variable. Yeah. Yes. But I think that it would be defeatist and punitive to settle for it too absolutely. That's all. I think that when somebody is ashamed of themselves, mm. it's worth finding what it is possible to say about that. Mm. Or what the, pos what the possibilities are for redescription here. Not as if to say, no, no, it's not shameful, it's wonderful. So much mm. as to say, what's shame, what's the word shame or the experience of mortification over containing? Because mm. there's going to be more to it than that. Mm. That you can be sure of. Mm. Yeah. So, how about Marion Milner then? How, how does she figure in?